Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a potentially very, very impactful system that's moving through portions of the Great Lakes and the interior northeast. A lot of areas could see their first snowfall of the season, and some of these areas could also see their first accumulating snowfall, and some areas could even see as much as 3 to 6 inches of snowfall out of this. We'll be giving you my snowfall forecast at the end of this video. We're also going to be talking about uh, some of those other conditions with this. So for example, the lake temperatures. The lake waters are actually very very warm for this time of year so that might suppress some of that colder air but it also might help with some of that lake effect we're going to be talking about all of those factors in today's video we won't be talking about that polar vortex split like I've been talking about recently in, in pr uh, previous videos just because I've made a post last night talking about that if you want to see that you can go to my community tab on YouTube uh, and you'll be able to find that it's the first post on there uh, but uh, if you want to see that you can go check that I did a whole in-depth uh, post on that, uh, but tomorrow's video or the day after, depending on uh, whether I make a video on this storm again or I decide to do this new topic, I'm probably going to talk about uh, the potential chances for some colder and snowier conditions for the month of December, and I'm going to be talking about that in tomorrow's video most likely, so uh, definitely make sure you are staying tuned, make sure you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss that video, so here is the current National Weather Service page. We currently have some winter weather advisories moving through upstate New York and Michigan, as well as some uh, winter weather advisories for northern Maine, where some areas could pick up as much as 4 to 6 inches of snowfall. Winter weather advisories also in effect for portions of Colorado, with some winter storm warnings in effect for southwestern Colorado. We also have some dense fog advisories for portions of southern Texas, as well as central California, with some frost advisories for northwestern most California and I believe those are heavy uh, or I believe those are uh, freezing spray warnings if I'm not mistaken uh, those those are one of the warnings that I haven't seen too frequently so I'm not quite sure what that warning is but we also have air quality alerts further east of there in Oregon as well now here would be the GFS model and then we'll look at the European model and then we'll look at how much snowfall both of them are putting out this would be by tonight. This would be right around 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're dealing with maybe some snow uh, for portions of southeastern Michigan, northwestern Ohio. But mainly it's going to be a fairly all-rain event. Unless you get into northern New England where maybe you could see some snowfall that might actually accumulate in some of these areas. As we continue forward here, it would be by probably right around 1 a.m. on Monday. So tomorrow. Uh, and then here's by 7 a.m. Here's by 1 p.m. We're dealing with that system pushing north and east. And with that low pressure, you're going to have to get a few hundred miles north of that low pressure system to actually get into some of that snow. So once that low pressure pulls up into Maine and New Hampshire, even those areas will turn over to some uh, to some rain. Now, that's not going to be your big system. This is just one of the systems that will be moving through. Here's your bigger system. We have a really wrapped up low pressure system up in Wyoming and Colorado. We have a band of energy uh, and moisture moving through portions of Missouri in Iowa westward to Colorado and New Mexico and as we continue this forward, here would be by uh, probably right around uh, mountain time. This would probably be right around 5 p.m. on Monday. And we're looking at some of that snow and rain mix for the Rockies uh, and just a general band of moisture moving through that general region. And look at where these winds are coming from. They're coming out of the south. So uh, you will be seeing some very moist air moving forward uh, and moving further to the north. And that air is going to actually help supply some of this moisture that moves through poor of the central plains and that'll actually be one of the reasons that this system is really so intense because you will be able to pull up some of that warmer moisture that will help fuel hurricanes let alone standard low pressure systems so we definitely will have a fairly wrapped up low pressure system also you cannot negate the potential chance for some lake effect snow for portions of the northeast as we get to Tuesday morning none of that should really be too much of a hazard but just something that you want to keep your eye on now you're even starting to see the slightest chances of a uh, of, uh, kind of a switch over to snow at the start of the storm so uh, areas of Iowa southern Minnesota northern Illinois southern Wisconsin some of these areas could be seeing a brief switch over to snow before it switches over back to rain uh, probably Tuesday morning so 
because of how cold it will be to the north of this system you might be able to switch over to this snow but as that low pressure system continues to head further to the north and to the east so will that shield of warmer air and eventually that'll be able to push further north and east and you will most likely switch over back to rain so let's just play this through let's see what the your uh, the gfs model actually does with this you start to see that snow on the northern and eastern periphery of the storm we're also dealing with some that uh, uh rain and thunderstorm activity potentially for areas further to the south and as we continue forward that heavy snow moving through portions of the great lakes and that's mainly because of how warm these lake waters are we're going to talk about that a little more later on in the video but the warmer the lake waters are all you need is a little bit of cold air and a little system that moves through to really enhance some of that lake effect and even though you're already seeing snow out of the system some of that snow is going to be lake effect enhanced so uh, while some of the lake waters are warm that can actually help produce a lot more lake effect than in a typical season and actually the most active lake effect seasons are in seasons where you had an, uns uh, an, uh, an unseasonably warm summer that really warmed up the lake waters and it stayed that way through the winter where you were able to blow off some cold air uh, above the lake and that was able to produce some more lake effect so you're seeing some of those effects on uh, this system and you're seeing over the lake waters you're seeing that dark blue heavy snow and that's because of those warm lakes now moving forward you start to see a colder high pressure system dip down into the northeast and that will allow some of that snowfall on the uh, northeastern side of the system but for many areas it has already switched over to some rainfall mainly because of that very warm moist southerly flow that we have now as we continue forward here you start to see that by Wednesday morning so that was all through the day on Tuesday so this would be by Wednesday morning uh, potentially a lead band of some showers that might be either in the form of rain or snow f for some portions of the uh, of the northeast and not even just the interior northeast these uh, showers might make its way all the way to the coastal northeast they will be very brief and they're not going to accumulate to too much so it wouldn't be too big of a worry but just something that you want to keep in mind you will have this band of uh, kind of a shield of moisture that will lift to the north and east you might be able to get some lake effect showers off of that as well but you're dealing with that big low pressure system over Iowa still driving up that moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico you're dealing with some potential convective activity through portions of the Tennessee Valley uh, so that is something that we have to keep our eye on as well but it has mainly switched over to m mostly rain for these areas as we get to Wednesday morning here's by Wednesday early afternoon and we're dealing with some of, those, some of that rain still moving further to the east you will see some snow for parts of northern New England by this point here would be by Wednesday night here's by Thursday early in the morning uh, right around 1 a.m. eastern time and we're dealing with a heavy rain and pretty much I would say light to moderate rain actually for portions of the east coast and it's not going to be too heavy but it'll also be a very persistent rain that kind of just lingers over one area for a long period of time now here's what the european model shows for the same exact storm we're dealing with some of that uh, snow and rain for portions of the great lakes and potentially some mixing for portions of michigan upstate new york vermont those general regions and then as we continue forward that warm air kind of pulls a little bit further to the north the air the only areas that are still dealing with some snowfall by this point are northern maine and northeastern new hampshire and as we continue forward it switches over to mainly all rain for many of these areas you maybe will see some trans over a uh, transition back over to uh to some of that snowfall on the back end of the system here to be by Monday night, here's by Tuesday morning, and we're now dealing with that other system moving through portions of the Central Plains right here. We're dealing with maybe some mixing on the onset of this, like I was saying before, over portions of Iowa, and that'll eventually switch over to portions of the lower Great Lakes. So let's continue this forward on the European model and see what it shows. Now here to be by Tuesday right around 6 a.m. Uh, Central Time, and we're looking at some of that snow uh, on the northern end of this, also on the western end of this in the Rockies. You guys might also be getting into some of that snowfall and as we continue forward that northern end of the system is going to be the coldest and of course it's going to also pr produce most of that uh, snowfall now let's continue this forward here would be by Tuesday night probably right around 6 p.m. central time and we're dealing with heavy snow heavy to moderate snow for portions of northern Wisconsin central uh, Minnesota no uh, northern Michigan and that general region and as we continue forward that snow lifts further to north here's by 
Wednesday early afternoon and getting through the evening hours on Wednesday and then into early on Thursday that rain is moving further to the east so it could be a rather uh, dreary uh, Thanksgiving for many of you guys in the eastern United States it'll be raining so it won't really be the best Thanksgiving day uh, but the day after Thanksgiving will probably be a quite nice day clouds will be probably clearing out and you'll deal with probably some sunshine and actually warmer conditions for uh, the day after Thanksgiving so that's the only good side of this I guess you could say now here's the uh, snowfall forecast from the European model and we're looking at in those grays under an inch to two inches two to six inches in the blues six to ten inches or more in those purples and you see some of those six to ten inch plus amounts for northern Maine and I think those are a little bit over exaggerated from what I'm seeing but generally it looks like a two to six inch accumulation for many of these areas and this is not included including what has already fallen some of these amounts because the model run has loaded before I'm making this video uh, some of those amounts in Indiana Ohio and Michigan will be much lower because some of that snowfall has already fallen so uh, it's probably not going to be four to five new inches of snowfall it'll probably be four to five inches in total of snowfall so just something that you want to keep in mind also, here is the GFS model, and this is kind of something what I was like what I was talking about with the Great Lakes. Notice how along the lake shores, you're not dealing with a lot of that uh, snowfall. Along the lake shores, it is it is actually quite warm. Some of those areas are actually much and very substantially warmer than their interior locations, and this is why. Here are the current lake uh, the current lake temperatures over the Great Lakes. Now, the only real body of water in the Great Lakes that is quite uh, quite cold by this point is Lake Superior over portions of the UP of Michigan and northern Wisconsin and uh, northeastern Minnesota those lake temperatures are actually quite warm also they're in the lower 40s but still they're not as warm as some of those uh, great uh, as some of the lakes in the lower Great Lakes look at some of those water temperatures that are closer to 55 degrees in parts of Lake Erie uh, as you get into Lake Ontario as well they're dealing with some very very warm lakes over southern Lake Michigan you guys are dealing with lake waters that are closer to 50 degrees so these are the actual Actual lake uh, waters, not the surface, uh, the, not the air temperatures, but still, that is going to have a big effect on this, and you will probably be warmer right along the immediate shoreline. But as you get further inland, it'll probably uh, cool down quite a quite a bit. Now, here's my personal forecast for this event under an inch for, of snowfall uh, and this is going from today all the way until the 26th under an inch of snowfall for many of these areas uh, in this lighter blue and this is where I'm looking at probably either flakes or maybe a light accumulation that switches over to rain in many of these areas but if you're in this one to three inch area this is where I think you might have an accumulation that stays for a little bit you see that little band for Michigan Indiana and Ohio you see another area for northern Michigan and again those interior locations notice how I did and highlight the areas that are uh, closer to the lake shores just because those areas will be a little bit too warm and then one to three inches also for parts of the western Great Lakes we also have some more areas dotted across the interior northeast and then a three to six inch area and maybe a six plus inches in some areas of northern Maine there uh, as well as another area there four portions of Wisconsin the UP of Michigan and parts of northern Minnesota there that's where you're looking at maybe closer to three four or five inches and some isolated locations might get six or seven inches of snowfall out of this event so that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye